Good afternoon, Sean. Good to see you. Good day. Uh, can I just check first of all your, your team news, please? Because Maxwell looked like he was he was limping off the other night, and, and we saw Ashley get on the on the pitch for a little while. So, can, can you give us a bit of a run through, please, on, on how the injuries are looking? Yeah, the longer term situations, um, Vids and Johan Goodmanson, they're a little bit um, they're making good progress, but they're, they're going to be a few weeks, I think. Um, Charlie Taylor's still having to be careful with, but he's beginning to make progress. But I doubt he'll be ready for for this one. Um, Ashley Barnes is getting some more minutes. Um, you saw him come on the other night. He's getting some more minutes in a um, reserve game. So, you know, he'll he'll be, figure again, we hope, as long as he comes through that OK, as he's, he's getting back to sort of true fitness. Um, so they're the main four at the moment. Uh, Maxwell will be fine. He, he got a bit of a tap on his leg, but he'll be fine, I'm sure of that. We spoke earlier to Conor Roberts and he was saying he, he missed the Liverpool game last night. He was busy watching the darts, but I'm, I'm assuming you watched the Liverpool game. <laughs> Well, we analyse games, so it's slightly different whenever we watch them. But uh, yeah, modern football. What did, what did you make of Liverpool last night? No, I'm watching it today. Actually, um, I had other plans myself, but we'll we'll analyse it today. The staff watched it, of course, and uh, I mean, look, they're a powerful outfit. We know that. Um, you know, they're, they're getting players back um, through a tough spell of injuries and COVID and all the rest of it. Obviously, a couple of players coming back from the um, Nations Cup. Um, you know, they're a good outfit. We know that. They've got pace. They've, they can be direct in their play, but they can play as well, you know, use the ball technically. And they could score goals. So, you know, they're, they're a good side, without a doubt. How do you stop them? Well, uh, they've only been beat twice this year, so it's, it's difficult. But, you know, we have beat them ourselves. You have to keep your shape well, of course. You have to work really fast on transition, uh, particularly if they work in transition. Um, and, and you've got to stay tuned in all the time. You know, they offer a threat. Um, in, in a different style, but kind of as as, uh, uh, as clinical in some ways as Man City in a different format, different style. But they're a really, really strong outfit. We know that. You have to play well. Um, you have to deliver. Certainly your defensive framework has to be good. Um, and you need big performances. I guess one of the most fascinating uh, duels might be uh, big Virgil van Dijk against even bigger uh, Wout. Um, I mean, that looks like a... A cracking contest. How how surprised have you been about how quickly Vought settled in? I've not been surprised by him settling in. I mean, most players we have here settle in because the group are very open. Um, there's a nice balance to the, the mentality here. So I'm not surprised at that. He's incredibly professional in his way um, and, he, and his will to learn and, and the knowledge he wants to pick up. Very flexible in his thinking on style because he's actually technically a very good player. But he knows at times we have to try and hit it up to him and he has to get hold of it for us and and maintain possession. He's done that very well in his first couple of games. So, you know, I mean, there's more to come from him, but I think he's offered a lot already. The atmosphere generated by the crowd the other night against United was fabulous in the second half. How, how, how important are they going to be now over the next few weeks? Yeah, I think they're, they're always important to us. But I think when we're having a tough period, as we have been doing, I think they're even more important. I think the other day I thought they were excellent in the first half because we were, we were below par in the first half. Man United were the better side. But they stayed uh, by the team. Uh, they stayed by them at half time, cheering them on, cheer, cheering them off, cheering them back on the pitch. And uh, I think that's important. You know, the players need an environment at the moment where they can go and play um, and take on these these teams, um, particularly the top sides. And I think the fans always play their part. But they've supported us for a long time, and they still do. So we want that to continue. But we have to we have to give them something to cheer about as well. And I think the players were certainly trying to do that, and definitely tried to do that the other night, especially second half, of course. Jürgen said today there's a big possibility, he believes, that Burnley can stop up, um, even though obviously you're, you're bottom at the moment. With, with 18 games left, what, what's your assessment now? Something maybe three from five, three from seven? I mean, look, you can, you can talk about all the your different permutations, different variations that could occur, um, but we really focus on ourselves and that's our main challenge. You know, can we get ourselves right as we continue to try and work at that? Um, not overthinking what's around us, letting others... You know, I can't, I can't uh, make others win or lose games. We can only concentrate on ourselves. Um, and I think we've stayed pretty steadfast to that, you know, with the team, the belief in it. The recent performances have shown a much better sign of what we want to do. Um, and we've got to keep layering up. And, it, you know, we have it a, a big, tough uh, spell of games with Arsenal and then obviously Man United, Liverpool come in and, and ones beyond that. But... All games are winnable. You know, that's got to be the mentality. And I think ours is firm. And I think it was the other night against Man United. It's going to have to be on Sunday because you're playing another top outfit. Um, and I think we're looking at ourselves always. You know, we're aware of everywhere else, of course. But we are looking at ourselves and what we're looking to continue to build here. 
Connor said also today that he's, he's surprised there's been no panic, no crisis meetings. It's all very calm, um, which is the way you've, you've dealt with it over the last few years. But how, how difficult is it to keep that calmness when it's getting very, very tense down there? Um, well, I mean, it's part of your job. It's part of the reality. We are where we are. Um, we accept that reality. We accept that we could have changed it earlier in the season and we haven't done. So there's a responsibility as me as manager and the, the staff and the players. Um, and I think the players believe in how we work here and they, and they believe that we can win games and we will win games. So there's a firm mentality as well. So, you know, lots of good things, but, but we've got to turn that into results. You know, I can tell you all the good stuff and what I think is right, but it doesn't mean you're going to win. You've got to go and earn the right. And I think we've been, I've certainly been talking about that in the media with the players all season. You know, no one gives you anything in football. You've got to go and get it. Your goal difference uh, is is the best in the in the bottom seven, which I know at this stage in the season is maybe not that crucial. But I mean, can you see it as the, as the season gets to a climax that that goal difference can be very very important? Well, you never know. I mean, you, you want your goal difference to be tight and obviously ideally positive. Um, we've we've only lost eight games, which you know for a, a side down there is not that high. Um, there's lots of these margins I've been talking about they're, they're not only what my eyes are telling me they're what the stats are telling me they're what the game stats are telling me um, we've got to keep working we've got to continue to believe and keep working to get on the right side of these, these tight situations and then, we, and then we change what's going on um, and that's been the story all season but now we've got to well we've been trying to activate on that we've got to keep doing that we've got to keep offering the players the way of working the players offering back that they can do that and I, and I think they are doing um, you know, we think Val will make a difference. He certainly has so far. Max will get even stronger and fitter. Um, they certainly give us a different way that we can operate and a, um, to try and open up um, offensively more. Um, and then we still need that solid base. We still need a base to work from. You know, we've seen it one goal in three games. You know, that's a, a good base. But now we've got to add into the attacking side of things, which we've been looking to do all season and haven't managed to do it as well as we hoped. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Cheers, Peter. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hello, Sean. Um, Hi. I'm just wondering the, the three draws that you've had. Obviously, they've not been wins, but how much better is the mood and the general confidence around the place after those three results? Yeah, I think we had to um, recheck ourselves after the the game um, against Leeds, and we had a period out and injuries and COVID and all that sort of stuff. I think we had a little period of realigning the players' thoughts. We got back to basics at Arsenal. Um, with, a, with a good defensive performance and, and could have actually, on a different day, if we had a little bit more quality on transition, you might have nicked more than just a draw, but draw it was and a, and a solid base to work from. Took that into the next game, did pretty well, didn't you know take our chances and then we took into Man United, soft first half, a very strong second half. So, you know, I think the mentality is there. I think it's adding all these details I've been talking about all season. I, I never think we're far away. Um, but it is, it is important now, it's, it's important every game, but we have to start making things happen. You know, it's as simple as that. But um, the three games have given us a good base, I would say, to continue progressing from. And how much of a blueprint was that second half against United, considering the threat that you had going forward, coupled with the fact that you, you sort of limited United to no shots on target? Well, that's a healthy mixture we're trying to get to. You know, we want to we want to defend well. Of course, we can't we can't go too far away from our defensive base uh, base. Sorry, and how we work, but then finding them attacking moments and a, a great goal um, we found in the end, and, and we found other chances as well. Um, I think we've got to continue to do that. And then, like I say, the player combinations, the way the team are playing, added in individual talent as well, and we we think we strongly believe we can get on the right side of games and win them. You said before about the squad picture for Liverpool having Salah back and Mane from the Africa Cup of Nations. They've added Diaz to the mix as well. He looked really impressive on his debut. Diego Jota's found form as well. How irritating is it to face him at this point rather than a couple of weeks ago? No, no, I mean, that's the way it goes. You know, you, you've got to play these sides, whatever the situation is. Uh, we're missing a few ourselves, which we think will continue to make the squad stronger. Um, but we believe in what we're doing, we believe in the players we've got, and we showed that in the second half against Man United. We can't let teams start as well as we did against Man United, um, or as well as they did, sorry. We've got to make sure we're operating from the first whistle, because if you don't, you can get punished. Um, but the other night, we, the defensive work rate kind of kept us in it at half-time and only won, and then you've always got a chance. And, you know, we've got to make sure that as soon as the whistle blows, we start like that, not wait for the game to come our way. And that was my only gripe, really, the other night, was waiting in the first half as if something was going to happen. Against the top sides, they're not going to allow you to breathe. You have to try and earn the right. And I thought second half we did. So we're really building on the second half mentality going into the Liverpool game. 
Just the last point on Jay Rodriguez, if I can, Sean. Um, it was brilliant to see him score the other night and you could see the emotion pour out of him when he did score. He's obviously a local lad. It Burnley means everything to him. You could see that. How important is he going to be as a, as a figure leading the line? Everyone seems to be talking about uh, Vout now and, and obviously his record that he's come with. But to have someone like Jay ready to step in now uh, with that goal, how big a figure is he going to be for you? Well, Jay's, Jay's a top pro. You know, he knows the area well. He's an excellent professional. He looks after himself. He's been very unlucky over his time here when he's been in and out the side or he's, or he's got in the side and he's just got injured. Um, and then he's had COVID and the like. Uh, but he really looks after himself. I was, I was delighted for him, actually, because he puts a lot of effort into what he does here. Uh, very balanced character, very low-key in the way he is, but he's got a lot of respect around these parts, and rightly so.